paste in the... Ah, you got to get the yeah. URL. Oh, I got you. Okay, so it says we're starting. Hey, we're starting, everybody. And let's see if it goes up as expected. It does appear that we are live. We are live. Excellent. Look at that. All right. So if you're watching this right now, we are going to be live streaming the first half hour or so of Moss, which is, I believe, coming out I think tomorrow, you could, right? I think you can speed run it in seven minutes, David. You can do oh, this. Oh, you think so? Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> That's a challenge. Challenge not accepted. Oh. Okay, let me let me find the link to the video. This this is always difficult for some reason. We're getting the link, folks. We're going to update our story, and then we are jumping in to Moss, the little mouse adventure. He's so adorable. He is just Very, adorable. Kind of reminds me of Five Goes West a little bit. Probably because he's a mouse. You know what? That I think that's probably true. Huh. Because it would be weird if, like, you said, like, you know, he reminds me of Clifford the Big Red Dog. Because he's very small and he's not a dog at all. And he's not red. <laughs> uh, there, there's some red elements to his character, right? I think there's some redness going on a little bit. That's his rosacea. Oh, okay, okay. He, ne uh, he needs to go to the dermatologist. He's very sensitive about that. Um, I can't find the link to the live stream, so... Oh, here we go. There we go. It's finally populated. Got it. Okay, great. Woohoo! Uh, so, we're going to get this story posted up on the site so that everyone in the universe can find this live stream and join us. And then we will start answering some questions about Moss because even though we're only going to be showing a little bit today, it's not out uh, completely yet. Uh, David, you will have a review up very soon, and David can answer some questions about the game as well. That is correct. I believe the review embargo is for midnight. Um, so, yeah, so you guys will be able to see my full thoughts about the game very, very soon. Just, um, what is that, about 12 hours from now, I guess? At this yeah. Point? You know what, I really have been looking forward to this one since they announced it about, what, last E3? It was right around E3, right? Yeah, I think it was announced at E3, and um, it's, uh, it's a cool game because, you know, even if this game weren't in VR, I think it would be pretty noteworthy just because it's a top-down action-adventure Zelda-like game which doesn't get a whole lot of um, traction on other consoles other than Nintendo. So I think it's kind of cool that they're um, releasing a game like this, and then just the fact that it's in VR makes it even more interesting. Yeah, let me turn off my other sounds, um, just so you guys don't have to hear any of my Slack notifications or anything like that. And uh, can you do me a favor, Tal? And or if you're watching, uh, just let me know. Can you hear my voice fine? Is that coming through okay? And is Tal's voice coming through fine as well? He's the other voice talking in the background here. Hi, I am Tal. This is my voice. Yeah, there's so only three. There's only three people watching, and I bet it's me and you and. And maybe you have another computer on. <laughs> <laughs> Here, speak and watching it. I bet it's me and you. Yep, I can, I can hear my voice on the live stream when I turn the volume up. So yes. Can you hear my voice? That's the the big question there. Watching it. I bet it's me and you. Yep, I, I can hear my voice on the live stream when I turn. The There's volume. my voice. Can you hear my voice. I can hear your voice, David. All right, there excellent. All right, we are good to go then. I'm going to. Go ahead and just assume everything's working fine then, because it seems like it is. And we're going to get started. I am playing on a different user profile than the one I was reviewing on, so I'll be able to um, start from the beginning fresh, like people will whenever they buy the game. Yay! Okie dokie. reason it's not there we go it's centered okay so the cool thing is this game is played entirely with the DualShock 4 controller 
so you don't actually use the move controllers at all. Um, this little circle icon wisp is being tracked based on my DualShock 4 controller light. So a lot of people t tend to forget that this controller is motion tracked as well, but um, yep. I also use quite a bit in this game. And that's why Same I'm trying pages here, is I'm Your time has holding R2 to grab a page and I flip it with my hand. While we began this tale long ago, yeah, same exact technology finished. there with the uh, the light tracking. Alone. That's right. No, it is tied to another, and the journey you take together could change the fate of both. All right, parties. if you just joined us too, let's see a few more people coming in. Feel free to uh, to ask any questions throughout the live stream. We'll be answering your questions while we play, and uh, you know, although we're only showing about twenty or thirty minutes of the game. Today, okay. David, David has played, played it pretty, pretty extensively so far, so he can uh, he can answer some more in-depth questions for you as well. Yes, I will not be able to give final impressions. I can't, you know, tell you what my review score is going to be yet. Um, but that review will be live on the site at midnight tonight, Pacific time. Skies, and um, I have a hard stop on this stream must. since the game isn't out yet. They don't, they aren't the letting us stream the whole thing, so I can only play about the first half hour. Broken by an unconquerable nightmare. And that night, the animals... I really do like the storybook end. aesthetic that they went for here. Yeah, it's really cool. It fits I think it the does theme. a good job of First, establishing, killed, you know, like at the very beginning, that um, you're interacting with the, the world, but you're not necessarily the actual character itself. You're not Moss. Moss is its own character. And so Next, it kind of gives you this, like, Sarpa you know, omnipotent observer type from the role. Underworld. They ravaged the castle. Which I think is important for games that are in third person in VR. I, I really don't like whenever they just let you control a character and they don't explain what your point of view is. Um, you know, like with a traditional game, like if I were playing Zelda or any third person shooter, Outside of VR, I don't really care, King's but if I'm wearing a headset bravely. and I have presence, the then I want to know who am I if I'm not the person that evil. I'm controlling. Every room was gutted. Every and so that's something that a lot of games don't really Borne. answer. Like Edge of Nowhere and Kronos are good examples of games that don't found. give you an answer to that question. Even the reclusive Whoever you are, I still believe in you, David. <laughs> on that night. They sent a great champion. Empowered by their we'll own. go ahead and skip through the story a little bit. You Meanwhile, guys can... Check this Sir out in more Argus, detail if commander you, you of the play King's the full game. Led the survivors west through a temple long abandoned by the yeah, it is, it is really a mouse. I like a the mouse leading the survivors west. It was Five an arduous west. escape. Argus charged back to join the I love the, uh, at the Myers Edge. little storybook the animations internally there, too. It's really cool. Definitely. I mean, this the really cool thing about this too, right? Is it's it's completely unique, completely new, okay. high production. Uh, you know, something that we're really starting to get some some neat content for for VR now that we've it's been around for what about a, uh, almost two years now as a consumer product. So we're finally starting to get some good content. It takes a while to build good content, but um, you know, not that we haven't had good content before, but I'm just saying like the quality of what we're seeing is, is, uh, is leaps and bounds over what we saw even, you know, just a few months ago. But she wondered yeah, yeah. what she might find if she went just a little farther. You can really tell people are getting used to the hardware and uh, have time to polish and all that good stuff. All right, so there's Quill. This is the hero of our journey here. She's a tiny little mouse. He's adorable. I mean, if I were a tiny mouse, I would be super scared of birds as well. Yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable. Especially oh, yeah. if she's ever seen Stuart Little. You know, that that uh, is traumatizing for mice. Here's what I will say. It seems to me that David's favorite genre of movies are is mouse-based movies. <laughs> so I feel like he's the perfect person to review this game. She was not well, exactly we are sure a Disney what she roused, so. but she felt no danger from the beings silently peering down. The Aristocats. 
they had some mice in there. They were mainly cats, but... Now why not the Arista rats? Quill had to you think? The village hey. gates would soon close and not Ratatouille? Be you probably like Ratatouille, I'm guessing? Uh, you, you wanna know what? I actually have not seen that movie. David? It's your favorite know, genre of movie! I know. I know. It's, it's like a fan of war movies not seeing Saving Private Ryan, so I need to rectify that. Now, as you can see, I've played a lot of Zelda games, so my initial instinct is always to cut all of the grass. Right. That's, that's, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, just, I can't help it. I should have started a lawn mowing business. I'm can you a little echo? Do you have the volume on the video turned up? Can you uh, can you pick the mushrooms? I've turned it back down. I just wanted to see how much of a delay we had between Discord and between uh, oh, okay. the screen. So it's down. Uh, Hopefully you're not getting an echo anymore. I don't think I can get up to those mushrooms. Gotcha. They're, little, uh, they're out of reach a little bit. Yeah. So right now you can see here. You know, I'm I'm running around with Quill, controlling her with my left analog stick. Um, I can jump with X. I'm using my sword with Square. And I can actually reach down, and using R2, I can kind of pet her a little bit. R2! And she responds to that. You know, if I get down here, up in her face, she actually looks at me. So she's fully aware of your presence, which I think is a really cool touch. And the animations are just so good on Quill. Oh, yeah. She, she moves so fluidly. You know, all the sword animations here... In her voice, you can hear the little yelps whenever she swings the sword real hard. She's so adorable. This one kill the butterfly! Can... Say that again? I said kill the butterfly, but don't really kill the butterfly. Don't do that. Oh, cow. It's not what Quill would do. There we go. So here's one of the first puzzles. So I'm using my DualShock controller to reach out here. And see, she's pointing at it too, so she's kind of trying to let me know, like, hey, hey guy, there's a thing there I can't do, you should do that for me. And so I grab it with R2, and I pull it out, and there we go. <laughs> she gave me a thumbs up. So yeah, you know, it might be for those for those people who are watching uh, who aren't familiar with Moss, maybe just give a little back, like, what's the game all about? Like, you know, it's a, it's a, like you said, it's an action-adventure game with a lot of puzzle elements, very similar to Legend of Zelda. But, like, how else would you describe it? Um, so, yeah, Zelda's the obvious comparison, um, but for other VR titles, it, it plays very similar to, similarly to Kanos, which is a Rift launch title. And um, there are some of the Gear VR games by Gunfire as well, like Hero Bound, that kind of have a similar uh, premise and a similar control scheme. Uh, but the premise of the game is you're this little mouse, and you're from a mouse village full of mouse people, and uh, you're under attack by this evil guy, and the game starts out in a storybook that you have to flip through and learn the backstory, and uh, you're one of the survivors here. And so um, you haven't really learned too much else at this point of the game. There's there's a little light source that you found at the beginning. You have a sword on your back. Um, but that, that's really about as far as it's gotten so far. Um, but yeah, lots of exploration, lots of puzzle solving. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, some the, some combat, but it's not combat focused. Yeah. So the, the neat thing here is, you know, you can see, like, the transition of the levels where you know she's running off in the distance. You can't actually move the camera at all, so the camera is fixed in every single scene. But I can see the rest of the level out there in front of me, off in the distance here, and so I know as I run forward and it transitions the camera. Now Quill's over here. And I can see the rest of the level up here that I saw before. And so the, the game has a lot of elements like that that uses, you know, scene transitions well to kind of convey your movement through the world. And it also really encourages you to physically look around. Because um, there are collectibles hidden in these levels that you can only find by moving your head and actually exploring and looking. Um, then like here you can see the, my reflection in the water. I can see my mask. That's, That's so cool. Uh, Studio Ghibli-esque face um, and you can look up and see the trees and leaves falling and it has a really nice sense of scale like she she feels about the size of a real mouse and so this feels like a tiny little mouse world that I'm peering into yeah I love it just the visuals just look great like I you know I want to go explore that world myself and is that so great that's so great about VR right just being able to look around 
and check out every little nook and cranny of the environment around you. It's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Night, her uncle often warned, was when danger was most present. Now, one of you know, obviously you you played this before, David. But like, was there anything now that you played the game a little bit, or anything that surprised you when you played it, or anything that you found particularly charming? Um, I was I was really pleasantly surprised with just how um, well done the combat system was, because obviously the combat is not a big focus of the game, but they've actually done a really nice job with adding on some layers of combos and dodges and. Uh, different enemy types and it, it definitely keeps things fresh and fun so you don't get bored of just doing a bunch of puzzles so i think the combat's been really surprising just uh, in the sense that um, it's, it's done a good job of keeping the game exciting and i do have the game audio turned down a tiny bit um, whenever you guys play for yourself, you can have it turned up a little higher, and you can really hear Quill's um, sound that she makes, and um, the little grunts and squeals, and um, the cute little noises that any any mouse aficionado like myself would come to appreciate. You haven't seen Ratatouille, David, so. Hey, man. Okay. <laughs> Have you seen an American, an American tale? Oh yes. Okay, the rescuers. Obviously. All right, the great mouse detective. Uh, I don't remember that one too much, but I know I saw it when I was old. All right, have you ever heard of Mickey Mouse? Uh, that must be new. I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> Ooh, the secret of Nim. There's another good one. Ooh, yes, that is. Oh, a good I love one. that one. I was a big Tom and Jerry fan growing up too. There's also Mouse, the comic book Mouse, which I feel is like great. I'm just googling things now. Okay, like I, I will admit I did Google Mouse movies, but I just the comic book, <laughs> the comic, the comic book I just brought up myself. So this is a great comic. It's a great graphic novel. You should read it if you haven't. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Her dive attack here. And uh, one thing that they, they did a really good job of, and I, I find this is a common theme in games that allow for platforming and kind of, you know, light platforming elements, is that they kind of colorize the, the surfaces that you can grab onto, like the little oh, the white, yeah, yeah. The white scuffs right here, so you can get an idea that, okay, that's something that's climbable. And, gotcha, uh, but it's not like it's a, like a flashing light or anything, so that's kind of nice right, it's still kind right. of... You know, works in with the environment and everything, but it does give you, you know, like somebody's been climbing on that before, so it's a little bit more worn. So it's a little clue. Exactly. That's that's cool and cute. Uh, Giga is asking, are you playing on a on a pro? Are you on a PS4 uh, Pro? I'm actually playing on a standard PS4 right now, but oh, I that's can standard. say that it does look much better on a pro, though. So you, yeah, so David has tried it on both. He says it looks better on the pro. Uh, but yeah, even Giga was saying that it looks a bit sharper than on the on the demo disc. I mean, you know, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful looking game. Like each of those little fern leaves and le the individual little blades of grass is just beautiful. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this scene just because, you know, you, you get so focused on looking at Quill, but then if you just stop and take a moment to lift your head up, you can see this whole little village here. Oh, right? yeah. Under this tree, and there's a stream going down, and it really, you know, does a good job of conveying a sense of this being a living, breathing world. It's not just a game. You know, like, you feel like that life would continue for these little mice people, even if you weren't here. Like you were saying, too, that sense of scale. Yeah, exactly. You know, I love that the ferns look huge, but of course, you're mouse size. And there's a little tiny mouse. Hey, you unlocked a trophy. Yeah, yeah, so like I said before, I'm playing on a profile that hasn't played the game yet, so... Um, you know, there's not any existing save data here, so everyone's going to get to see this as if it were brand new. 
Okay. Can I interact with these mushrooms? Can I jump? Can I grow in size? No, this isn't Mario. <laughs> Can you get? Are there any green pipes anywhere? Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, Quill cannot swim, so I just murder <gasps> Quill. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. She shook her ears off <laughs> to get all the all the water. Yeah, well, well, like, well, like I was telling you before before the stream started, this is one of those games that I feel like obviously it could exist outside of VR, right? They could just fix the camera just like this. It would be like a cute little Zelda meets a God of War type game, you know, with the fixed camera angles. Um, but it just, it would lose so much of its heart. And I think that, you know, that says a lot for how great the job we've done with bringing this game to VR. Because, you know, as I sit here playing it, it's, it's, it's a simple game for the most part, but I just can't help but smile. You know, like it's a game that I feel happy while I'm playing. And it's, she's just such a cute character. Ah, that's right. Okay. Whoops, I missed it. There we go. Martin is asking if we have any extra keys, especially EU keys. No, Martin, we don't have any keys that we're giving away on this live stream. Uh, we should, though, check with Polyarch, David. It'd be good to see if maybe we can give some keys away on a, on a future live stream. Yeah, definitely. I would love to. Um, this is definitely one of those games that I know a lot of people are curious about. And um, I, I definitely think that, you know, the, it's a game that a lot of people are going to be happy with whenever they get their hands on it. It's just adorable. I think it's one of the best ways to describe it. It's so interesting to think of, you know, like you were talking about before, the the little world and the, and the scale and things like that. Can you imagine a game like, you know, as big as say like a Skyrim size game where one of the races is a little, you know, little mouse size like this where you actually play as that race and you see the game in a completely different way. That would be so neat. She raced to the door of the cottage she shared with her uncle. Yeah, that would be Hoping interesting once to he saw her discovery, um, use this perspective for something like that. And no one's, yeah. Definitely no one's done anything like that before. Yeah, I mean, and you could have even like little secret cities that like, you know, the other races don't know about. And it'd be very interesting. Now watch out, squirrels eat mice, so I don't know if you that should trust them. That one had a saddle on it. <laughs> I've domesticated that one. Just wait until he eats you. He'll, he'll get his. <laughs> Quill's hands trembled as she showed him the glass. What is it? She asked. A look of panic spilled over her uncle's stoic exterior. Yeah, I just love all the, just the little vignettes and how you come in and the story us. unfolds a little bit of the storybook and then you go back into the world. Just a, it's just a really neat uh, narrative vehicle, you know, storytelling vehicle. The clearing, mm -hmm. she explained. And you can see and over see here, these are up? the little pieces of the Something scrolls started. that I was finding. It uh, completes this collage uncle type Arya's image if you find all the collectibles. Reader, with you here, right now, because everyone loves to collect stuff. Even with the moon full and bright, I must go right away. Quill pressed. Where are you going? I can help. We can help. No, he snapped. Right, I will be back. I don't want to sit here and watch cutscenes until I return. Point, so. I need your word. Yeah, to more game. More away. game. How have you found the controls? I mean, it looks like it's, uh, doesn't look like you're really having any issues with them. No, it plays great. I mean, obviously you want to make sure that your, your play area is, um, set up so that it can easily see the controller and your headset. Um, you know, I play sitting down, obviously, for this game because it's not very active. But I know some people, depending on how their cameras are set up, it might only be seeing you know from their shoulders or chest up you have to make sure that you know if you like for me i sit in a chair on the couch i rest my hands on my lap and i have to make sure the game can always see the controller 
Yeah. So that, that's the only thing is it, it's easy to forget that you have to see the dual shock as well. Bring that glass and your sidekick too. We're going to need them. We'll yeah, call so this. See this game. Hey, start is, these it breaks the trope because the character was sleeping after the start. It wasn't at the beginning, so that's how it's different. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, oh, anyone that's lighting? played? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I love I the nighttime saying, scenes. Yeah, the lighting and the particle effects are just really nice too. Starving. In campfire stories, they often meddle in the lives of mortals. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually playing this, uh, getting this tonight, and jumping in because I can just imagine like how beautiful. Uh, you know, when you're looking at a at a screen, your head's not. You know, you're, you may be in a dark room, but you can still see like outside colors and, and ambient light, and everything like that. But when you're in a uh, VR set, to really get like you know brilliant colors and particle effects when it's. Um, you know, that's the only thing that your eyes can see. I can't wait to really check out the world for myself. Yeah, and like I said, I, if, if anyone has the capability, I highly recommend playing this on Pro. Um, it, it really just, it looks even sharper. Um, it just looks so much smoother. And uh, it really helps bring it to life even more. Now refresh my memory, David. The uh, the new Rev, because I have an original PSVR. The new Rev, uh, it doesn't do anything differently when playing with Pro. It just has the HDR pass through and the built-in earbuds. Is that correct? It's basically the same hardware, though. Uh, the earbuds aren't built in. Um, it just has a little storage holes on the sides for the earbuds. Is the kind only um, so you still need to provide your own earbuds. But, ah, gotcha. Um, th that is correct. The, the, the HDR pass-through is the only real um, benefit. And that doesn't affect anything while you're in VR. That just means that you don't have to unplug the processor unit to use HDR outside of VR. Yeah. Ryan, uh, to answer your question, because uh, I know you said you missed the uh, the answer to the to the question about the the pro. It does look uh, it does look sharper and better on the pro than it did on the regular PS4. Uh, did, you, did you notice any big difference between the demo version, David, and what you're playing now in the final version, just on the regular PS4 though? Um, to be honest, I haven't played the demo that's on the PSN store. I've only played gotcha. it at events, so I played it at PSX and E3, um, but I haven't played the actual. PlayStation Store than off yet. But, I mean, yeah, this is on a regular PS4, and it looks really nice to me. I mean, I know, obviously, you're looking at, you know, artifacted video, you know, a bit, and you're losing a little quality because we're live streaming, but um, I imagine, you know, you're, what you're seeing, it looks pretty good on the live stream, and I'm sure what you're seeing live, David, looks pretty good. Not too grainy and not too, uh, uh, not too pixelated, I would say, huh? Yeah, it looks even better in the headset for sure. And the stream quality is very good from what I can tell, just looking whenever we started. Uh, I'm using the Elgato HD60S, um, so it's definitely, a, it's a capture card optimized for streaming, so it definitely looks good on PSVR. And it has a neat feature where it can actually crop out the, um, the rounded edges of the output screen, so that's how you're seeing the full screen video right now. Is it actually has a special setting just for PSVR? Yeah, I love that that we're finally doing this through that capture card instead of just directly uh, directly to YouTube because we don't get that fish eye effect that we used to have. It looks yeah. beautiful. Yeah, the only downside is I can't see comments now on the side. Right. <laughs> I got you covered. People Good are just conversing. Girl. No other, no other real questions yet. Good girl, girl. But yeah, if you do have any questions for those of you who are watching, feel free to ask them. I will let David know. And like I was saying earlier, you know, anyone that has ever played a Zelda game is gonna feel right at home. There's plenty of destructible objects for you to just knock around while you're exploring. And see, here's a good example. See, if I were to be sitting back here playing this game normally, right, if I were just kind of, you know, forgetting I'm in VR and I just kind of playing, just not even really paying attention, I would miss this collectible right back here behind this axe. I have to kind of lift my head up to see it. 
And so there's a lot of little collectible items spread throughout the game like that, where you have to kind of actually look around the world to find. Gotcha. So every once in a while, standing up is a good idea to yeah, survey yeah. the entire scene. For sure. Uh, standing up, but also looking down, because there's a lot of, like, archways that you walk over, and you could miss what's underneath if you don't um, take the time to actually kind of look at it a little bit. Gotcha. What about anything? They probably don't do much behind you because, it, you know, they can't really track with the PSVR if you're really looking behind. But have you found anything like that yet? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Look at that here. Uh, not, not too much behind, no. Um, so, I mean, the, it can track the headset movement, but the camera won't be able to see the controller. Your controller, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you should lose your light. And I don't remember how to get that scroll. Let me see. Maybe there's another platform hidden somewhere. Um, I don't remember. Oh well. Can you can you go back to uh, the other side because it looks like there's another little you know the stairs step down. Maybe there's a. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I think my camera is not not really pointed down enough to see my controller over here. But I think I would it would detect the platform hmm. if there was one. I don't know. Yep, you would think. Well, there you go. Spoiler free live stream right here. <laughs> we'll let you figure that out. That scroll for yourselves. I think we're getting close to the end of what I'm allowed to stream. Um, whenever a quill is drifting away on a raft, that's uh, that's the spot I have to end at. Have you uh, now, David? Get ready. This question from Laxative Pain. Okay. Okay. Did you find? Uh, how did you find the variety of levels, puzzles, and combat in the game? Uh, so basically, I guess you're asking about balance, right? So is there a good variety? Is there a good mix? Um, I, I would exactly. say, yeah. Exactly. Or does it get repetitive, you know? You're not doing the same things over and over and over, hopefully, right? No, I, I think they did a good job. Like, you could see at the beginning, there were a couple puzzles back to back. Now I've just been kind of exploring for a while with some very light puzzle elements without having to really think too hard. Um, so there's there's a good there's a good mixture for sure. Um, but one thing I would say, just um, this, maybe this is my personal preference, is I, I think that even though it's understated and it's not a huge focus, the combat is actually really fun, just because of how fluid the animations are. And I would have loved more combat, you know, or just give some combat earlier on, because you know we've been playing for about a half hour now and I haven't even fought anything yet. And I'm, I know that's an intentional pacing decision. Uh, but yeah, so here's here's the raft. Um, so you're not even going to get to see combat in the stream, but uh, we'll, we'll have more gameplay videos tomorrow, and we'll do another live stream tomorrow too. Um, so we'll, I'll just pick up that next live stream right where this one's leaving off. And um, well, I'm also telling you, you should have beat that squirrel a little bit. Squirrels are not to squirrels are not to be trusted, David. That squirrel looks pretty nice. I don't know. Squirrels are not to be trusted. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's all I'm allowed to show you today, but uh, like I said, the embargo for our review lifts at midnight Pacific time, so that's in nah. about 11 hours or so from now, and we'll have a yep. full review up, and then tomorrow during the day, is it, uh, we'll is it do midnight, another live stream. Is it midnight Pacific, or is it midnight Eastern? 9, 9 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I believe it's midnight Pacific, but I'll double check. Okay. It, the, the review will be up tonight, uh, for sure. Yeah. Regardless, yeah, later <sighs> tonight... Uh, early tomorrow if you want to check it out uh, definitely something that you probably do want to check it out because it's uh, it's just a really pretty game and like a, I I know you've had a good chance to put a lot of time into it already David I can't wait to actually try it out tonight I'm definitely going to dive in yeah and uh, so for those curious this is developed by Polyarch and it is a PSVR exclusive um, so yeah yeah, and, and again, like some people are saying, the demo, it looked really uh, uh, screen door graphics, and it made people a little nauseous. Uh, David, you weren't getting that at all in the final version, were you? 
No, I mean, especially playing on a pro, I, I didn't see screen door at all. I, I don't. I don't think the demos on the PSN store are optimized as much, and I, I would yeah. assume that they're not even optimized at all for pro. So, I mean, if you have a pro, then this game is going to look really nice. Uh, this stream was actually on a standard PS4, so if you like what you saw, it's going to look even better in the headset, even without a pro. Um, I, th I think they, they did a really good job. I mean, to be fair, uh, just so everyone knows, I don't suffer from nausea or VR sickness or anything like that. Um, so I could be missing some triggers that other people would be affected by, but it doesn't seem to really um, have much artificial movement at all. The camera's always fixed. You're moving Quill separately from your head. Um, yeah, I can't imagine this game would really make anyone very sick if, um, you know, it, it, it runs very smooth. The, the frame rate's great. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, David. And like he said, please check back tomorrow and we'll be doing, showing off some more of the game and we can talk about uh, everything that we saw and also be sure to check out our review. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. Later.